Yo, what's going on guys? Crispy Flakes here. For today's video, I am going to go through five NBA stars that need to be traded from their NBA franchise. So we are roughly two weeks into the NBA season. And while it's a very small sample size, we're kind of getting a good idea of which teams um, are definitely in need of a big time change. Or maybe so, man, it's like there's still time to turn things around, but just on the pace that some of these teams are going, or just some of the players in general, uh, there's some trades out there that I definitely think make sense. So keep in mind as we go through this video right here, I did turn a uh, trade over right now for 2K. And I also turned off financial trade rules um, just because like I don't want to be at like mercy of 2K thinks the trade is legit or not. Um, these are just trades in my own humble opinion. So keep in mind also, guys, when it comes to, like the finances and stuff like that, there might be have to be like a role player here or there that is thrown in just to make it work. But yeah, so we're going to do these trades, and then I am going to do a simulation to see if it actually helped these teams out or not. Uh, let me know in the comments section below which trades you would like your favorite team to make, or what you think about my trades, or what you would do differently, you know, stuff like that. So the first team we are looking at is the team that's currently last place in the Eastern Conference in making this video. That is the Washington Wizards. Yes, guys, a 1-6 record. I feel like a lot of people thought this team was going to be on the come up but, uh, now that John Wall was like, healthy and stuff like that, and Bradley Beal looks like, like he could be a top two option on a team out there. Uh, Dwight Howard has not yet played yet. He's supposed to play pretty soon, though, man. Um, you know, for this team, but still, like, how much big of a difference is Dwight Howard going to make? That remains to be seen. But looking at the two players that you have uh, choosing to trade from, you're looking at either John Wall or Bradley Beal. Maybe a second trade out there would be to uh, try to get rid of Otto Porter, who still has two years, fifty-three million dollars left on his deal. But yeah, man, John Wall, Bradley Beal, both really good players. It just kind of appears that maybe those guys together just doesn't quite work out. So Bradley this season averaged 23 points, 4 rebounds, 4 assists. Pretty much the same, like literally same scoring numbers as last season. Um, the assists a little bit worse, rebounding, I mean pretty much right there. But yeah man, showing that he's pretty much the same player as last year, which is still a really solid shooting guard in the NBA. And they got John Wall at 21 points, 7 assists, 2 steals per game. 44% field goal, only shooting 22% from 3, but uh, he's got time to improve that. Never really been an elite 3 point shooter. Although last year, 37%, that was a step in the right direction. So, as far as a trade I would make, if I had to choose between these two guys, I think I'm probably trading away Bradley Beal, just because, I, I don't know, I, I just feel like that's what would happen in this case. Now, whether I think that's the right choice, I don't know, man. Y'all let me know in the comment section below. It's kind of a toss-up for me, but I'm thinking I'd probably trade Bradley Beal because when it comes to, like, shooting out there, there's plenty of shooting guards out there that can do that type of thing out there, and that is shoot the basketball, where John Wall, his quickness and stuff like that is a little bit more tougher to find. So, I'm doing a trade of Bradley Beal, and the team that I am trading him with is actually going to be the Clippers. The reason this team makes sense to me is because they are kind of looking for that star player. I'm not saying Bradley Beal is quite that, but when you have that guy, kind of guy on your team, um, ultimately, man, it's going to be a lot easier to attract players such as like Kawhi Leonard, which is one of the guys they definitely want to go for this upcoming free agency, you know, after the 2018-2019 season. So... The trade we're doing here is I'm thinking Lou Williams, who has been like a bench player for them this season. I mean, uh, his stats, you know, scoring down a little bit, still a really good option right there. Uh, but I'm also thinking that you probably toss in Avery Bradley, and it would be the same case where Avery Bradley and John Wall in the backcourt would be a really good defensive backcourt. They also get Lou Williams off the bench because Austin Rivers has just kind of not been very well out there. Um, but that's really not quite enough to get Bradley Beal, in my opinion, because Avery Bradley, not what's, what he once was, and Lou Williams definitely up their age. So I feel like you also have to toss in a uh, probably a, a unprotected first round draft pick. So, of course, uh, for, the, for the Wizards, this makes sense because they still get two veteran caliber players, but they also get that first round draft pick just in case, you know, two uh, years down the road or whatnot, they need to go into a rebuild. Well, you got the draft pick right there, and then, you know, they get their stars. So you might argue maybe another uh, first round draft pick would be. Uh, warranted but Bradley Beal is injury prone so and not to mention Lou Williams was one of the better shooting guards last season so I think this trade makes sense for both sides let me know in the comment section below next up I mean this one goes without saying man the Minnesota Timberwolves it's time to trade away Jimmy Butler like plain and simple trade this man away it's just chemistry issues left and right that's not helping your franchise and guess what man the trade we're doing is the exact trade that the Houston Rockets offered you like why are you why, did, why has this not been accepted yet and that is a trade with Eric Gordon Eric Gordon this season, man, 14 points, 4 rebounds, 2 assists, shooting 30% field goal percentage, 23 from 3. At this point, I'm like, yo, why would you even want Eric Gordon on your team? But apparently the Timberwolves want him at least. So yeah, Eric Gordon, and then it was like 4 first round draft picks. I feel like maybe just 3 would be fine. Um, And of course they would be uh, protected, but I'm not you know, trying to figure all that stuff out for this video. And they would always be every other year, which I cannot do in NBA 2K19. But yeah, man, this trade is absolutely wonderful. Timberwolves, you get a shooting guard that, you know, when he's playing good basketball is nice. I mean, last season, you know, his field goal percentage is always a little lower and stuff like that. 
um but he's still a three-point shooter you get the three first round draft picks they even offered up four like why would you not do this man and then of course the houston rockets they get a little kick in the butt with getting, getting uh, jimmy butler on their squad on a team that wants to contend with a very poor record right now makes complete sense both ways i don't i mean it makes more sense i'll probably say for the timberwolves and they're the ones that's fighting back on it all right next up we do have a trade involving kevin love and the Cleveland cavaliers they are currently one and six i mean by this by, by the time this roster right here is like ready to be a really good team you know by the time colin sexton gets some more years under his belt kevin love is gonna be old as hell man so it's time to trade him to a team that um will allow you to get some young assets back maybe some draft picks and stuff like that so i thought this actually seemed like a nice trade to me um and surprisingly enough it's with it's with a team that you could argue is still maybe rebuilding themselves um but i mean this would be a nice piece to add and that is actually the phoenix suns the phoenix suns have devin booker and deandre ayton uh there's definitely some other you know they, they need a point guard playing simple but a power forward like kevin love alongside deandre ayton could actually be like pretty lethal especially in the western conference and stuff like that man so i'm thinking a trade of josh jackson who's only averaged uh you know 7.6 points per game this season two assists has, you know kind of struggled a bit i mean it gives it gives the uh cleveland cavaliers another player to work with who's only 21 so you give up him and you give up probably in my opinion man mikhail bridges um he hasn't really played a lot this season either yes he was one of their first round picks and then i'm thinking you also need to give up probably a top i'm gonna say top five protected first round draft pick. if it's top five they don't get it because you are still getting mikhail bridges and josh jackson but i feel like those two guys uh warrants kevin love who's having a phenomenal season despite being injured at the moment but that's only gonna be temporary and yeah all of a sudden the suns team is looking like a team that's offensively gonna be pretty damn dangerous so i liked this trade a lot man i came up with this one all by myself i thought it was pretty good so yeah we're gonna do that all right welcome to the team and then next up we are actually going to be looking at the memphis grizzlies and that is going to be with mark gasol so there are gonna be grizzly fans out there that's probably gonna be totally against this trade um just because like you know let me go to the player stats actually real quick uh where are we at man yeah player stats so i guess well, i guess we can look at this um wait let's do this man this season 15 points eight rebounds four assists i mean his rebounding's roughly the same never been like an amazing rebounder um never wow he's never averaged uh 10 rebounds per game i actually never knew that scoring i mean a little down a little bit passing down a little bit defense definitely is what's looking like down for him although the two steals is nice but can shoot the three-pointer out there i feel like he just needs to go to a team where he'd be a little bit more motivated to a uh, ball out on and uh i don't know man i feel like this trade that i'm about to do does benefit both sides so of course the memphis grizzlies i don't think they're going to like make the playoffs i know they're forward too so you can fight me on that if you want to i would totally get it but uh, I see him actually being a nice fit on the uh, Charlotte Hornets, playing alongside Kemba Walker. It gives them a nice little one-two punch there in the Eastern Conference. Those two together would be nice, man. So the trade here would be Marcus Saul in exchange for Malik Monk, who this season is actually their second leading scorer at 12 points per game. Uh, it gives the Grizzlies another rebuild piece. Um, also, you would toss in probably Willie Hernan Gomez, who is only 24 rookie season man was actually pretty fantastic for the knicks never really got a chance anywhere else but it would give them another center to work with at only the age of 24 i feel like he could be something special if a coach was committed to him and uh this right here i'm, I'm gonna say a protected first round draft pick but you know i could all i, I could also be argued for it to be unprotected um although marcus so i believe is only on a one-year deal let's check his contract out real quick here and okay so he's got a player option after that so yeah man so it would be a little bit more of a risk for the charlotte hornets in the sense that microsoft marcus all might not sign uh resign with them but i love the idea of mark with kemba walker that has some good potential out there especially in the eastern conference looks like we gotta give a few more players just to make it work um you could even say that maybe they take on one of the horrible contracts so we'll even toss in how's pa uh, parsons doing this season yeah we'll even say they toss in chandler parsons i mean i'm not saying that would happen because it's kind of a last second thing but yeah all right except for both trades I, I like it man i like it and then finally we are looking at another team that is struggling with a point guard shooting guard duo in, in a case where the point guard and shooting guard are both fantastic players it's just it's proving to really not like make much sense to keep them together and that is the the um portland trailblazers yes they are five and two they're playing good off they're, they're playing good regular season basketball man they always play good regular season basketball but at some point you got to say okay is what our roster has like is this right here going to win us the championship or maybe is it time to start i don't know going in the direction of a rebuild something along those lines they have a whole bunch of just like money that's tied up and just a few players so i would say by training cj mccall not only are you freeing up 25 million dollars actually about 26 million dollars per season over the next three years but also maybe tossing another 
uh, one of these horrible contracts like an Evan Turner, and all of a sudden, man, you're going into a stacked free agent period with a star point guard in Damian Lillard that teams are going to want to play with or players are going to want to play with. And um, that's enough right there to, you know, maybe get, a few, maybe get a free agent or two to come sign along. Plus, you got Nurkic on a very friendly contract, only $11 million per season. That's great. So I'm thinking a trade of CJ McCollum, who I love a lot, guys. I think he's a great player. It's just he's too similar to uh, Damian Lillard in style of play. Uh, I'm thinking you also toss in Evan Turner, who is, you know, it's a bitch-ass contract. But at the same time, it's like he's had a pretty good role play season. Um, and then the team that I think that CJ would be a great fit on, Philadelphia 76ers, man. Imagine Ben Simmons, CJ in the backcourt together. That would just be cool as hell to watch. So I'm thinking this trade would be Robert Covington, uh, another friendly contract, a guy that's going to give you about, what's, what's the average, man? About 14 points per game, six rebounds, which would just be a nice piece alongside Damian Lillard at a friendly price. Um, but then also, got to give up something to get something. Probably that Kings draft pick. It would be a little bit of a risk for the uh, Trailblazers because the Kings are playing good basketball right now. So it's like, how great is that draft pick actually going to be? But at the same time, if we don't expect the Kings to really uh, keep up that style of play, then it's going to be a top five pick in my opinion. So not only do they lose the contract, the bad contracts, they free up cap space for free agents. They get Robert Covington on a friendly deal who has been proven to be a nice starting small forward and they get a potential top five to 10 pick in the draft. So yeah, that would be a great direction for the Portland Trailblazers to go. I think we also got to toss another player here just to make the trade work. And yeah, let's do Jared Bayless. We'll say that. I mean, I'm not, that would not be the player because of the contract and everything. But yeah, man, that's five players that I have going right here. So I think I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to do a simulation and see if this actually works out for anybody. So give me one second. Guys, I totally screwed up on this. Um, I forgot that George Hill was also supposed to be part of the Kevin Love trade. Uh, just because it would give the Suns a veteran point guard. And not to mention the Cavaliers would be out of that money too. So that would be good for them. So he was supposed to be part of the trade. I'm going to add him on right now, guys. Okay, so as far as teams that made the playoffs, we have the Houston Rockets in it as the fourth seed. Uh, the Portland Trailblazers actually made it despite losing uh, CJ McCollum. Uh, the Clippers are out there too. Uh, we got the Washington Wizards again, the eighth spot. Philadelphia 76ers as the three spot. So let's go ahead and check out these uh, player standings real quick. Just like see how the players did out there in each case. CJ McCollum, 18 points per game, five assists. Looks fantastic for him. Uh, we got the Bucks, Bulls, Cavaliers. This team, I mean, they really, they really just lost Kevin Love. They got jo uh, Josh Jackson, who did average about 12 points per game. Uh, the rebounding about, about three per game. We know he probably brought some good defense too. Um, so yeah, score, actually, like I said, we're going to go his career stats. Okay, so his scoring, uh, rebounding down a little bit, but, you know, that's not really all that much. And then uh, Mikel Bridges, eight points, about three rebounds per game. Uh, Celtics Clippers, so Bradley Beal, the leading scorer at 25 points per game and five assists. I love this fit, guys. I, I want Bradley Beal to go to the Clippers so bad. Uh, Grizzlies, we got Hernan Gomez, who averaged a double-double, so he looks like a great replacement out there. Uh, we got Hawks, Heat. Hornets with Marcus Gasol at 14 points, eight rebounds, four assists per game. Top two player there. Uh, Kings... Knicks, Lakers, probably some team I'm forgetting, guys. My apologies if I did. Uh, Nuggets, Pacers, Pelicans, Pistons. Yo, mind this far back. Oh, here we go. Jimmy Butler at 20 points, five assists per game. Surprised that's only the fourth seed, though. Not going to lie, man. And then we got, we got the Suns with a 17-point, 11-rebound uh, Kevin Love. Timberwolves with Eric Gordon. Actually, the leading scorer of this team. So, I don't know if that's a good or bad thing for them. And then Portland Trailblazers, uh, 33 points per game. For Damian Lillard, that's looking like MVP to me. And then Robert Covington, good all-around numbers. Uh, Wizards looking like this. Lou Williams as the second leading scorer alongside John Wall. All right, so let's go at some of these playoffs, see who wins it all, see if it makes a difference in that case. But I will say, man, the teams that made the playoffs is pretty nice. Uh, I would still think, I would think the Charlotte Hornets would still make the playoffs, at least the eighth spot. But who knows, man? All right, Houston Rockets to their Wizards are gone. Clippers are gone. Nuggets gone. All right, all right. Going through this pretty fast here, guys. My apologies, but we got the Houston Rockets still in. Looks like they are going to lose to Golden State. And uh, Philadelphia is still in it, but they just lost to the Indiana Pacers. All right, man. So none of my teams I made trades with actually got to the uh, conference finals. But it's all good because, you know, that's 2K and stuff like that. So we know, we all we all know, man, these trades is legit out there. Um, as we have the Raptors against the OKC Thunder. And the Thunder, who you could also argue could use a trade at the moment. Uh, they actually won four games to two. Anyway, guys, hope y'all enjoyed this video. Be sure to drop that like, subscribe if you're new to my channel, and peace out.